one. Okay. Um, so everyone is here. Uh, I am opening at 6.35 p.m. Uh, August 5th, this meeting of the Amherst uh, Historical Commission. Um, I'm going to read our preamble here. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, uh, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law uh, extended by chapter 22 of the acts of 2022 and extended again on July 14th, 22nd and signed into law on July 16th, 20, 22nd, 20, 20, sorry, 2022. This public meeting of the town of Amherst Historical Commission is being conducted via remote participation. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by a technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing has been posted on the town's online calendar. Okay, and so uh, to start our meeting, our first agenda item is announcements. Uh, Nate, Jacinta, any announcements from the town? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. No, I don't have any. Okay. Um, on September, I believe it's September 27th is the um, preservation mass. I think it's their biannual, they have from meeting preservation meeting uh, once every two years. So if people wanted to Google that, see if it's of in, any interest to them, it's happening in Worcester this year. Um, next item, uh, unless anybody else has any announcements they wanna share, feel free to just speak up. Nope, okay. Uh, next item on uh, number two is review approved minutes. This is a new thing for us. Uh, I'm assuming that we're thanking Jacinta for taking excellent minutes <laughs> for proceedings. <laughs> um, so what, what Nate and Jacinta, what, um, how do you suggest we go about, uh, making suggestions? I mean, I know that there are like, um, I mean, the things that I noticed were mostly name issues. Um, I had one small substitute comment on the, the June, June meet, meeting minutes, but um, I didn't get fully through them. Should we send our, if they're small, should we just send our updates to you guys within a day or so? Yeah, I think if you want to send them out, I think we're sending a Word document if anyone wants to track change it or make comments, we can bring them back. I mean, in other boards and committees, essentially once, you know, if people agree by consensus, we just consider them complete and then you know, but if you're willing to, you know, look at them, we can bring them back on the 22nd just for a quick, a quick uh, vote. But, you know, I, different boards do different things. I know the planning board really reviews them and votes them. Others just agree by consensus that when these changes are done, they're ready to go to be made public. So I'm, I'm okay with the latter. Okay. Um, so, what do meeting members think? Do you want to um, table them for the next meeting, giving everybody an opportunity to mark them up? Yep, I'm seeing two. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, okay, all right, that's great. So yeah, just uh, within the next couple of days, track changes for anything on there and send them off to Nate and Jacinta, and then we'll uh, reintroduce them at the next meeting. And then we'll just get into habit of doing that when they, I wasn't expecting them this meeting, so I was a little unprepared um, of making, maybe making those track changes before we meet, and then we can review them real quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, agenda item number three is review and approve the preservation restriction agreement with the Amherst Women's Club. Um, Nate, do you want to introduce us it, to that yeah i mean it's really similar to the jones library restriction the commission entered into although it's uh not being you know approved by the massachusetts historical commission so you know we're writing it as if it's a um you know is kind of like a permanent restriction you know has all the um you know all the sections of a regular restriction it's not like we 
changed it. It has, uses the same exhibit in terms of defining major or minor alterations. Uh, and then, you know, it runs with the property. And so as part of our CPA grant with any, with the Women's Club, and well, this is kind of a similar format we'll see with probably a number of other properties. Um, it'll, you know, just, it's a local restriction. It'll be recorded at the registry against their deed. Uh, and then, um, you know, we withhold some amount of funding uh, until it's recorded and approved. So right now, I think, I don't know if it's like 5%, we have right now 10% of the project. And so they, they're they they're finished with the project. I think they're actually anxious to uh, <laughs> to get their final payment out. And, um, you know, they completed it, included the exhibits, uh, mostly from uh, inventory forms. But you know, I emailed the town attorney the other week and just said, you know, one, if there's any other issues, I haven't heard back, but, you know, they had reviewed it a while ago when we set up this template. So I mean, I think it's ready. Commission members would have to come in and sign it and probably provide your license. And then we could do it down with the clerk or upstairs, but to get it notar sign signatures notarized. Um, and I mean, that's, I think that's about, about it. Uh, you know, I mean, if there's any questions about the, you know, the actual restriction, it's, you know, the property has to be maintained as it is. You know, they can't do certain demolition to the property, uh, any changes have to be approved. So if they're you know doing another addition, that'd be considered a major alteration. And so we'd review it similar to what we've done with the Jones Library and hold a hearing. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it runs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, the, so the basic, um, The basic structure of it is that it is we don't have a regular year to year interaction with them. Um, they know that they're supposed to notify us of any changes. Obviously, in a pretty public spot, we probably notice something pretty significant going on. I did look at it, but I mean, it's a long legal document. I don't remember if I saw. Is there a provision for. And again, just because this is going to be a template, and I would assume this would be something that would be in a provision for, you know, what happens if, you know, they take something down, like, you know, any body with a preservation, is there a, um, a penalty or, or like an enforcement clause for any any activity that goes on without proper notice that doesn't meet the standards? There is. Um, and then, you know, the town's been you know, they said working with the building commissioner, we could enforce something. I mean, typically in terms of a remedy, we would, you know, we'd have to send a letter, could have to hold a hearing, they'd have to respond within a certain time frame, And then it, you know, gets to a point where we'd have to have some resolution. I mean, unlike other properties, the Women's Club does have a covenant on it, is my understanding that they have to maintain it almost as is when they acquired it in 19, like 26. And so, you know, some private entities, a restriction might be really new or unique to them, but I think they're familiar with how to maintain the property. So I don't, you know, I don't see, I mean, not that they won't propose changes possibly in the future, but, you know, I think they've been maintaining it, you know, pretty carefully for, for a long time. Yeah. Now. Again, it was more a question, less a question about them and more a question about like what the general, um, you know, what the general structure is for a penalty if changes are made without as changes are made either without, you know, that go against the standards without notification, right? I mean, that's yeah. really kind of the question. I, I guess I'll say it for, um, you know, we have, we have, for, we have a new permitting software and maybe Jacinta, we could look into, we've talked about this for um, affordable housing um, restrictions, but maybe for preservation restrictions, we could try to get it on the permitting software. So any kind of permit gets flagged. Uh, mm -hmm. So like local historic district acts that way, any, any, any permit, has to be reviewed by staff. Um, and so we could try to set that up. We don't have a lot of preservation restrictions if there's some way to catch that. Okay. So if you have to apply for a building permit or an electrical permit or plumbing permit, it just gets. Right, right. Um, okay. So yeah, I, I mean, I had to go back to this again, but like, Were there a change outside of, I mean, you know, uh, there's uh, there's a stop work order on the house around the corner for me. <laughs> um, were a change to happen outside the permitting process? I guess that's my, again, and this is really just an academic question. It doesn't have to do so much with this preservation restriction, but because we're in the business of this and it was a long legal document, you know, let's say, you know, entity X 
removes their historic porch, you know, it is does this restriction function to enforce that the uh, historic porch is um, returned, you know, either a replica or if the materials are still there, you yeah. know, to return to its original condition. I guess that was my question. It uh, it requires that. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have questions about preservation restriction? Okay, and we've been through the um, reviewing the um, changes for the Jones Library, so everybody understands the role of the Historical Commission in um, in in, in I guess the word is enforcing or um, um, the restriction itself when changes are up. So, um, so do you, what do you need anything else from us? Do we need to have a vote? Yeah, I mean, we need a vote. Um, you know, I know, for instance, you know. I would, if we, if we think it's good and we vote it, you know, I would try to get the last payment going for the women's club okay. even before it's recorded, just knowing that it's in process. Um, they did print it double-sided, <laughs> the document. Okay. We, need, we need a single-sided to go to the registry. So there's right, something, right. you know, okay. but um, yeah, like I said, I mean, I've, I've worked with a town attorney on a few of these now and I've sent them to a few different, I think like South Church, for instance, has one and uh, the JCA has one. Yep. Uh, and there, I mean, you know, a lot of this is going to be really similar language. There may be a few conditions or, you know, some changes, but this template is, will be followed pretty closely. Okay. So if there aren't any other questions, um, I'm going to use a trick I learned in another meeting, which is to say uh, the chair would entertain a motion to approve the preservation restriction agreement with the Amherst Women's Club, at which point anyone in my commission here could say, so moved, if they chose to. <laughs> So moved. Okay, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Uh, so we have a motion to and uh, approve the preservation restriction with the Amherst Women's Club. We'll have a roll call vote. Uh, I'll start with Madeline Helmer. Yes. Pat Auth. Uh, yes. Antonia Brillenberg. Yes. Patty Startup. Yes. Michaela Rasnick. Yes. And I, Robin Fordham, also vote yes. So that is how many of us are here today? It's all of us, right? Six, six to zero. Motion passes. Okay. Um, next up, next steps with uh, Wildwood Cemetery. I see Rebecca Frick is in the audience. We could, uh, I'm assuming she's here to present. Uh, I don't know if she's here to present. I, you okay. know, I put I actually I put this on there just so we don't lose, you know, track of it. I think that, um, you know, after looking at what they, um, Rebecca, what the commission looked at last time, there's still, you know, documentation and other things that could happen there. And I think at one point we talked about, you know, would a commissioner or two volunteer? I mean, it could be a subcommittee. It could be just like ad hoc where people are willing to go and maybe take some pictures. Um, Do we want to invite Rebecca in for a discussion? Yeah. Okay. Becca, you'll be asked to join as a, oh, um, Jacinta, could you do that? Ask her to rejoin as a panelist or bring her in? Yeah. I just added her as a panelist. She Great. should be joining us sh uh, shortly. Great. And Rebecca, you're muted, so feel free to unmute yourself. There we go. Now I can, should be able to hear you. Okay. Nice you. Hi, Rebecca. Welcome. Hi. Yeah. And Hi. I just Hi. missed everything Nate said because it was spinning to let me in. <laughs> so. oh, okay. I think yeah, I, I was saying I don't I don't know if you necessarily have a presentation. I, I said I put this on there. I'd like to just keep this kind of you know in the forefront of the commission's discussion. And if there's you know at one point we said there could be more documentation of the cemetery. It could just be you know volunteer hours to take pictures of monuments or certain things just to. Um, I'm, I'm anticipating that Mass Historic would ask for some of that and would be nice to have. So, I mean, that's all. It wasn't, you know, necessarily like, oh, I'm not expecting a, a big presentation or anything, but. Yeah, just an update, essentially. And I know, Rebecca, I think last time I directed you to um, send an inquiry to Ben Haley um, at MHC. And I was curious if you had done that and if you had heard anything back. No, I was, I thought Nate was going to introduce me to him, but I can. I can write to him directly. Okay. All right. I mean, I can do that after the meeting tonight. I can uh, uh, connect us by email 
and then you uh, can can submit the form B to him and he'll give you feedback and take it from okay. there. Okay. okay. Um, it was my impression that they didn't want too many photos, but I can certainly add more. Yeah, I think that at this point, um, my understanding would be that the next thing uh, to do would be to start the process with MHC to have them direct us to what they actually want um, to, for us to include in the, it's not a form B, I can't remember what what form it is, <laughs> cemetery yeah. form. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, that's probably the best, uh, the best way to go. But okay. um, also, I know, Rebecca, when you and I met that, um, you know, you have a, a tremendous amount of, um, I think, um, plot documenting to do there. And I just wanted to open up the opportunity for anybody here to connect with you if they were interested in doing some volunteer work. Uh, or if you had that, if you have the, the capacity for that, um, we can just have um, a conversation I, here. Yeah, I'm now completely caught up on that. Uh, oh, great. What I, need, what I haven't caught up on is documenting all the monuments. Okay. Um, so at during COVID, I had somebody who was interested in photography and they did a beautiful job for several of the sections. So I'll always, I'll always take help with that. Yep. Okay. Okay. So um, if anybody is interested, um, Rebecca, do you want to, let's see, can you put your, uh, trying to figure out how to use the chat here. <laughs> I was going to say, you could put your, um, you could put your email in the chat or I could actually just, you want to just, um, why don't you give it to me right now and I'll send it to folks after the meeting and they can be in touch with you if they have any okay. Volunteering. It's amherst.cemetery at verizon.net. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to wait for Robin for you to introduce me to this person. Yep. And I'll send them what I have. And I I was curious, um, Nate, you, this is going off topic a little bit, but you were talking about giving the final payment to the women's club. So mm -hmm. Uh, our roof project is complete. So Nate, you asked me for photos, but I also need to do some sort of write-up. Is there some example of what I need to do for that? Yeah, I mean, the uh, Women's Club just used the description in the on the form B. And so I think for the um, for the farmhouse there, I'd have to look and see if it was in, it may not have an inventory form, which I think was some of it. So, you know, we're looking for usually it's an architectural description, just uh, describing the style of the house. Um, you know, the images will be really helpful. I mean, really it's to understand what it looks like. And then, you know, so that way if there's any changes, we would note it. So um, okay. it just has to um, be a paragraph or two. Yeah, um, I don't wanna um, volunteer her, uh, I'll, I'll make her indecision, but Madeline, I don't, I don't know if uh, you could do a quick architectural description for them. Uh, you're well trained in that regard. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we can be in touch about that. I think okay. that's something I can help with. Okay, that would be great because I think there is a form B and it has hardly anything written on it. Yeah, so, I think. Yeah, Madeline, that would be great because I'm not used to writing in that style. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can be in touch about Right, just I can okay. kind of interpret what you what you have. Okay, great. Great. All right. Well, okay. thank you for for joining us. Okay. And thank um, you. we'll probably just we'll be keeping this as I think as an agenda item going forward, just for updates. You know, and if um, you know, for some reason the day before the meeting there's no update, you know, you don't need to, you need to feel the need to you just shoot us an email, let us know that there's nothing new to report. But hopefully, okay. um, we'll have a little bit more information next month. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And sorry, I thought I had emailed. I know I looked up Ben after the meeting. I thought I had an email going. I guess I just never sent it. Um, and then Madeline, the inventory form, right, is from the 80s. And it just has like a pretty short paragraph about the house. But it has been inventoried. It just was never updated or, you know, but I think we could take from that. 
Yeah, and that I mean, if Manila can do the architectural description, um, I can work on the um, updating the historical narrative, or we both can, or you know, it's always. I feel like it's, it would be good for us to commit to updating our form when we have outdated forms like that to committing them when projects come before us. So I'll put that on our list too. Okay. Great. Yeah, just follow up with me about that, Robin. Yeah, yeah, I will email after the meeting. Okay. Um, agenda item number five, uh, discuss possible CPA proposals due in September. What do you yeah, know? So, you know the, yeah. the CPA process, I mean, last year, I don't know, Robin, if, I know the CPA committees met recently, but I think it was just to discuss the track, but last year, CPA proposals were due at the end of September, right? I think they were yeah, due. Yeah. I think they opened in the beginning of September and September. closed in December, yep. Yeah, and then the committee, you know, the CPA committee discusses it over, um, you know, November, December, and tries to vote by the end of the year. Yep. So if the commission has any ideas for projects, you know, we've talked about um, trying to get, you know, either a survey plan going, but if there's anything else that's uh, project specific, um, it might also be that outside entities come before the commission in the next few months and ask, you know, ask for review, or, you know, typically we might recommend or review certain projects, but I was just putting out there, I feel like, you know, September is earlier than it had been. I mean, it was that way last year, but previously proposals weren't due until December. And so the schedule shifted. And yeah, a few years ago, it shifted, shifted. And now it's really um, a big push to, you know, our, our last meeting is scheduled for December 19th, but we're hoping not to have it go that right. long. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, have even you like heard, in the, um, have yeah. you heard from anybody who's, you know, any ideas, anybody who's interested in anything? No, but, you know, the new preservation plan, I wasn't sure if there's anything we'd want to work on there. Um, you know, for instance, last year, the local historic district commission put forward a proposal to study East Amherst for a local historic district. And the CPA funding is hopefully going to get, you know, 50 to 70 properties inventoried with new forms. Okay. And so, you know, most of those forms are in the new word document with some, you know, some information completed about the idea is to hire a consultant to really generate those forms and look at a, a local historic district there. Um, Is that um, gone out to bid? Uh, I, it will this week. Okay. Yeah, we're just seeking quotes for that. And, uh, you know, I mean, you know, if there's any studies that need to be done or if there's any physical projects, I mean, the town might come forward with something for some of the buildings. But, you know, I, I haven't actually heard. I feel like it's, I think people are still in summer mode and not thinking that CPA proposals will be due in six weeks or eight weeks or whatever it is. Um, so generally the historical commission puts forward things like survey plans or, or, you know, or survey, sorry, surveys. Um, I mean, I, I keep thinking of, uh, surveying, um, the surveying of mid-century or modern, more, more Amherst modernist buildings, or maybe some of the, um, uh, housing developments that, you know, are kind of from from my youth, <laughs> or not, you know, earlier, I guess earlier than my youth, but, you know, um, trying to figure out when uh, the more kind of planned housing developments will start to come, start, we, we should start to think about um, surveying them. Um, but I don't know, I, I don't, nothing, nothing springs immediately to mind. Um, yeah, I mean, someone did inquire with the town about the Frank Lloyd Wright House a few weeks ago, and I said, that's not really it's private, you know, and I said, you know, we, you could look it up, but I, you know, we don't I mean, whatever information is available in terms of contact, I don't have, you know, a personal email address to give out, but yeah, it made me, did, it made me think about like mid-century modern and, you know, could we identify 30 properties or something that um, might be worth a proposal to get inventoried just because I don't think they ever were, right? So when the town did the bulk of the inventory work in the late eighties through the nineties, they just weren't of that age yet. And I think they were overlooked. And so. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, um, that's my project. I'm sort of spearheading and I've started it. I have a list going and I've been, um, yeah, if that's something we're interested in, I know it's on the agenda for later in this meeting to talk about, but 
Yeah, I mean, the question is whether it would go off. So, so we have kind of two options for getting inventory done. One is volunteer through the commission, and the other is um, getting CPA funds to hire a consultant, right? Those are essentially the two avenues. So right now, Madeline uh, had, and I think Hetty and I had kind of identified that as an area of interest um, for our volunteer work. Um, that said. Um, yeah. No, I think it's like, it's good to just assemble the list. Yes. And, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And then, right. I think it might be good to, right. To have a consultant actually, um, right. Research them. There's so, a really, really, go ahead, sorry. No, There's go a ahead. really good um, report that was done for Cape Cod on modernist housing by my mentor, um, Virginia Adams, who works for the Pub Pawtucket Archaeology Lab, or PAL. And that's um, extremely extensive, and it covers most of the modernist architects working at the GSD, at Harvard, or at Yale, um, all building houses on the Cape. And um, it's really readable. And I think, you know, it would be very nice to be able to offer people who are interested in the Baird House on Chase Road something else that could sort of stand in for, you know, hey, but you can't go visit the Frank Lloyd Wright House because it's private. But here, look at all of these other, you know, 50s and 60s modernist houses that were built in Amherst on Redgate Lane or wherever <laughs> you want to pick. Um, I think that would be a really a really great contribution to our architectural significance in town, actually. So um, if we wanted to pursue a CPA application, um, yeah. would that be something, Nate, that one of us would write the um, like a CPA, CPA application for? Yeah, I think staff could help, but right, I mean, we it's an online form. And, you know, we could just set up a Word document and, and work on it. But I think, yeah, I mean, if we're, you know, if we think this is something worthwhile, you know, do we say it's, you know, 25,000? I'm not sure what a number is, but, you know, if, Robin, if you have a list or uh, Madeline and say, okay, we're thinking about so many structures and here's, you know, I think an inventory form. And then if we want like some other summary information, the deliverables, what they would be. Yeah, I think that, you know, um, the CPA committee likes to know you know, uh, why is it important to the community or the significance of the history of the town? Is it threatened? Uh, you know, and I think there's, you know, there's staff could help respond to some of those, but yeah, I mean, I think that's a worthwhile project actually too. Um, Madeline, do you want to work on prepping that? It's a pretty straightforward form. It's not a ton of work. Um, for a deadline at the end of September, is that right? Yep. So basically like a draft by the time we get to our next meeting. Yeah, sure. I think it, it is interesting to think about whether we want to pursue this as individual. Um, right. I mean, it just, yeah, I guess it it's worthwhile to enhance our sort of well, our knowledge of Amherst sort of architecture by adding these 20th century buildings to Macris um, individually. I think it it is also kind of interesting also to maybe consider, right, this sort of the history of the housing. And I think if part of this could be um, like a, a historic context that really um, in detail documents the movements of sort of housing development in town um and that would just contextualize all these what we're actually looking at yeah that could be um and i see pat you have your hand up but that could be part i mean that could you could throw that into the draft and as you know as part of the proposal to ask but it, it is funny yeah it's i don't know if, if these buildings are threatened or if there's this yeah I think, well, I mean, one of the things that I understood from my my summer internship was that one of our responsibilities is to basically build our inventory. So just inventorying these houses, which are 
historically relevant is um, sort of a, a charge of the commission. So that alone, yeah, uh, yeah, is is no, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd say they're, they could oh, be threatened just the way we changed our bylaw and just, you know, if building techniques have changed, you know, if, say flat roofs, like what's happening. I mean, CPA is really about, right, the historic preservation piece. And I think we can make the case there. And then if we if we would like to get a little bit more out of it, we can include that in the proposal. And then if we ever want to make this a part of like another, you know, like modern house tour or something that lives online, I mean, that may be you know, staff and the commission, not necessarily funded by CPA, kind of like the writer's walk, but, you know, I'm envisioning that this could become other things, uh, good for economic stuff, tourism, but, you know, for CPA purposes, it's historic uh, preservation. Uh, you know, there's- that's Well, the and it's, I mean, there's just language yeah. in there about, you know, and I'm sorry, Pat stole your hand, <laughs> language in there about, uh, you know, that that uh, CPA funds can be used for plans that, you um, that helped the that basically helped the town town manage its historic inventory. Like that that's an a, okay. a allowable use. So like, you know, in order to be able to deal with the house that comes before you in demolition delay, really helps to have an inventory form that's right. We have to know what's here yeah, and exactly. sort of how rare right. each before, yeah, yeah. each building is and you know where it fits within this sort of context. Yeah. Okay. Um, Pat, go ahead. Well, I, I actually was going to introduce the, the concept that Madeline introduced about the historic context, because I, I am, have some awareness that many of the modernist housing was built as UMass grew and neighborhoods grew to accommodate the growth of the staff and faculty there. And I think that's that's a historical context, as well as the who the developers were. Um, because I think certain neighborhoods had the same developers and consistent architect, uh, uh, you know, designing the houses. So, Madeline, thank you. That that was kind of where I was coming from. And I I know the Frank Lloyd Wright house is of interest, but I also think that the house that's adjacent, I think it's somewhat adjacent to it, is a Sears of Roebuck house. And so I'm wondering if there are any other curiosities I don't mean to call them curiosities, but they have a, a unique status um, in Amherst that we need to identify. Yeah. Right. Like something like this would allow us to just better evaluate um, a 20th century house that comes before us. Um, right. And just know what's, what are the significant aspects. Yeah, and, and Hedy, you had mentioned, right, it's the Cape Cod uh, Modern House Trust, Housing Trust, right? Is that? Um, yes, I can, I can, hopefully I can send you and Jacinta the link to the actual report mm -hmm. because it ended up being a National Register nomination for, a you know, an, an, a quite a large group covering Wellfleet, Truro, um, maybe Provincetown. I can't remember offhand it's probably about 50 houses altogether um let me let me find that for you afterwards sorry i don't have it to hand right so i think yeah, i think you and i had emailed a while ago and i think i was i'm online right now it looks like the cape cod uh, modern house trust and so that's a, a pretty you know it's a really nice website i mean it's a it's not it's different from a town you know website but it has some great information and contextualizes a lot well, they've also been trying to save Marcel Breuer's house um, on the Cape as well, and they now have raised enough money to do that. And it will be a a study center and a place to stay, but a very expensive place to stay because they're obviously trying to, you know, use that money to fund work on the on the building. Um, Doctor Momo is also involved in this, and Robin and I had sort of picked up on all of this about a year ago. Um, so I think there's, I think there would be very similar interest in in Amherst for our yeah. our contribution to this era, you know. Yep. And I think it um, a survey would allow for um, uh, identifying any potential national register nomination um, opportunities. We wanted to go that direction with some something in particular. So, um, okay. So we're agreed on that. Yeah, um, I think so. Yep. Okay. Um, and Madeline will get a work with Nate to get us a draft to review next meeting. 
Okay, great. Got it. Okay. Uh, any other CPA news? Remember proposals, Nate? No. No, I mean, we're still, I'm still trying to get the FY25, the things that started in July, kind of under contract and moving. Some people mm -hmm. are, you know, started already. Some are getting ready. Um, so I have those to do. But no, I haven't heard anything about the next round. I mean, I think, you know, the high school track was a big discussion recently for the CPA committee, not, not you know, not related to historic preservation, but. Yep. yep. Um, okay. Oh, um, that reminds me. Uh is my status as CPA rep uh, current or do I need to be reappointed? I've forgotten. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. I think the the town staff likes to have a vote of the commission every year just to confirm or ratify who would be the um, rep. So, you know, the CPA committee in town is made up of representatives from other boards and committees, historical commission, conservation commission, the housing authority has one, planning board. Uh, and so Robin served for a while now, yeah. um, it, and it is extra meetings, you know, it's pretty busy in the fall and winter. And then, you know, the CPA processes, they make recommendations to council to vote as part of the budget process. Uh, so, you know, Robin, if you're willing to serve again, someone could make a motion or someone else could, but. I'm happy to serve again. I make a motion that Robin Ford be our representative to CPA. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, Michaela seconds. Uh, so we have a motion before the commission uh, to appoint Robin Fordham to the Historical Commission representative of the CPA committee. Uh, I will take a roll call vote. Madeline Helmer? Yes. Okay, Pat Off? Yes. Patty Startup? Aye. Antonia Brillenberg? Yes. Michaela Rasnick? Yes. Okay, uh, uh, we are six zero in favor and I accept uh, the nomination. So that is, now I just need my, to get my paperwork done, I think, <laughs> for our next meeting. Um, and then uh, for members of the commission, I think who, maybe who weren't here last year, um, ideally what will happen is that um, we'll structure our meeting so that in September, uh, potential applicants or people who are starting to apply can come before us with any questions about their project. Um, generally, the town vets projects to make sure that um, uh, applications for historic preservation that aren't actually eligible don't go forward. Um, so we shouldn't see anything before us that uh, isn't really applicable. And then um, I believe in October, maybe they have an opportunity to present to the committee and we make um, a general recommendation that I kind of bring with me to the CPA meeting. So we have a discussion about the projects that are submitted once they're done. So I guess that happens in October. And then um, I take the recommendations uh, from the committee. In the past, um, we have ranked projects. Uh, I think we, we stepped out of that, but I would say that in the commissions, it's actually in the um, CPA meeting, it's actually really helpful to have a sense of what our higher priorities are. Um, because in, in recent years, uh, we've had more applicants that we've had funding for. And so that makes uh, it important to be able to advocate for which product pro projects we think are most important. So that'll come, hopefully come for us uh, next month. Okay, any other CPA questions? Hearing and seeing nothing. Uh, now we have updates. Um, an update on downtown design standards. Yeah, I was just going to mention the town's been working with Dots and Flinker to, you know, assess the downtown and come up with recommendations for the right of way and then also for architectural design standards and you know, starting uh, probably in August and then into September in this fall, they're going to be holding a lot more uh, public meetings. They might hold like a three-day workshop at the high school in mid-September and then have, you know, like office hours downtown at certain locations. Uh, but just, um, you know, we're trying to get a web page set up on the town's um, site. I just want, you know, commission, let commissioners know, you know, they'll be open to the public. I'm not sure if any of you were, had been asked to be part of a working group, but um, I've, I've oh. been on it, Pete. Okay. Um, but I, I'm particularly anxious to 
invite Antonia and Michaela to join in the fun because <laughs> um, it would be really great to have more representation from students in town. Yeah, so you know, I can update the commission. We can always e I, we plan on email. I'll email it out once the schedule gets finalized. But you know, I plan on you know, I think it's like September thirteenth through the fifteenth. We're targeting having like a Friday evening, all day Saturday, Sunday, and other you know meetings throughout um, September, October, and November. Uh, and you know, this will be go on into for like about another year, where there'll be multiple chances. But I think you know, just to let everyone know that that is happening, and I think it'll be a chance to weigh in on what. You know, what we think about downtown and the future development. Great, thank you. So how do you be in touch with Antonia and Michaela? Yes, Michaela, you a student? I didn't think you were, I wasn't sure, but I, um, I'll, I'll, get, I'll contact you both. It's possible that you'll just be able to network a little bit and it would be really wonderful. Um, that's definitely been a, um, a, a category of our uh, population that is underrepresented in the in the design standards yeah. working group. And also, project. I mean, above beyond students, uh, you know, relatively recent graduates too, younger, younger exactly. residents of Amherst. That I think uh, Michaela represents that cohort. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Um, item B: Inventory form updates for recent demolitions. Right before the meeting started, I sent uh, everybody, uh, and I don't know if they had a chance to review, just a draft um, form for, uh, I finally got to 140 Southeast Main Street. Um, I don't know if you want to just pull that up. Nate. Um, and the building has not come down. And I did have a question. What is the status on their demolition? Are they going to need to come back before us again? Yeah, so um, it was a while ago that uh, the owner came for three properties on Southeast Street, and yeah, their their uh, demolition any any permit has expired, so they'll have to come back again before the commission. Okay. Uh, yep. And so yeah, here's here's um here's Cumberland Farms, and so you know they came for these three properties here. Yep. And then yeah, so. You know, here's the inventory form. Right. And so um, this was, I need to go over this again to make sure I have all my information right, but um, I was able to trace the deed back to um, a Jonathan Edwards, who is the stepson of, <laughs> go back up there, uh, of Hannah and uh, Nehemiah Strong. Um, and he's not the Jonathan Edwards who was, uh, um, a reverend from from Northampton, but um, if you scroll down to the maps, just so everybody knows the process that I go through. So I look at the deeds and I get the names for all the deeds, and then I compare them to the maps. This map of seventeen seventy two, I guess, which was what when did uh, Amherst um, incorporate separate from Hadley? Nate, do you know? Uh, not off the top of my head, I have to. Eddie, do you know off the top of anybody? I should I should know that. <laughs> Um, but uh, this is uh, one of the earliest maps uh, that we have, and you it's very hard to make out there, but it says Deacon, D-E-C, Edwards. Um, and so there's information on Jonathan. Uh, he was a deacon of the first church. And then if you scroll down again, you get to the uh, 1830 map, and you can see that um, that extension of Route 9 that points down, uh, you can see the three buildings that um, they've come for us uh, presumably for demolition. This one doesn't have the um, owners identified, but then if you scroll down one more time to the next historic map, which is from 1860, I don't have it circled, but just at the corner, you can see S. Edwards and that's Jonathan Edwards' um, grandson, Simeon Edwards. So that's kind of the process is um, uh, identifying the names on the deeds. Um, deeds always almost always reference the deed before and so you can make a title chain going back and then you can compare it to historic maps and then you dig around in the secondary uh, resources and census and stuff to build a, a narrative around there so i just wanted to at least show you guys that and by next meeting i'll have that one finalized and then we can work on um submitting it to uh 
to the MHC for inclusion of the inventory, which brings me to a question which I've has popped into my mind on and off. So Nate, my understanding is that there's macros and then there's the town's inventory. So macros is the system where these uh, building forms that uh -huh. people saw get approved by the Massachusetts Historic Commission gets loaded into their system and you can locate them uh, via map or address. But you're, the town itself is supposed to have its own inventory or maybe keeps its own inventory. I mean, I have heard in a number of places like Macris is not the town's inventory. That's what I've heard, right? So the town could have its own inventory that has information that isn't included in Macris. Do we have any records in the town hall or is our yeah. inventory essentially what's in Macris? Yeah, no, we, we do. Um, the previous town engineer or, you know, now a while ago, probably a few decades ago, um, created a, an inventory for every property in town or street address. I, you know, it wasn't every property, but I mean, so ideally most of the forms, the, the work on the properties are the inventory forms um, that are in macros. And then occasionally there's additional information, whether it be like a newspaper article or a photograph or something. And so, um, you know, I, I can't say, you know, it's, it's very, um, inconsistent in terms of what's done on a property. And so, you know, we call it, the, we call it an inventory. It hasn't been updated necessarily. It's not, you know, periodically updated or frequently updated. It's like whenever. And is it just like files or is it? A yeah, it's just paper files. It's paper in a few files? file okay. drawers. So okay. for instance, like on, um, um, what, 1164 North Pleasant up in North Amherst, you know, uh, for instance, there was a project where they said, oh, there's always been this in-law apartment in, this, in the back of the farmhouse. And the inspector was, you know, questioning because it's listed as a single family. And so um, the inspector asked the owner and then we did some deed research and found information from, uh, you know, the current owner has done research and said, oh yeah, actually it, there was, when it was built, he found, you know, he knew the family when he moved in, he talked to the family who the family, you know, his family bought it from and he has a written record of what they said. And then he's done his own research. And so he, you know, wrote like a three page paper about the property and um, just, e just like just in the last few weeks, emailed it to the town. And so, yeah, I put that in the file. And so, okay. you know, for instance, they think that, um, yeah. And, and yeah, somebody is just like, you know, it's like kind of anecdotal stuff like, Oh, it was like, you know, so-and-so lived here and we think it was a, you know, maybe they made brooms in the back at the back of the place, which was the apartment and, you know, nothing's been totally verified, but, you know, that just went in the street address file. So some, sometimes things like that, if they come through, uh, but typically it's just the inventory form and photos from like, you know, 60s or 70s. Okay. Okay. So if there was something that somebody found, you know, an interesting clipping or something that we didn't want to go for a full, you know, building form on, you could forward that to you to be added to the local inventory. Right. I mean, typically we try to, you know, I was thinking it'd be great to get it all in macros, but, you know, some of this information isn't really relevant for macros. Um, right, right. Yeah. Or it's just the beginning piece. Like, I'm just thinking about like uh, the, the place called the poor farm, not that it was a poor farm, but um, that there was when I uh, did just some um, newspaper research for it, like the history of that property was really fascinating. There's this guy who was a, a swan breeder. Um, and, you know, so I have all those articles and oh, yeah. you know, written. Uh, so, okay. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Okay. Um, I don't think we have any other uh, inventory forms, uh, but maybe by our next uh, meeting, we can have uh, that one finalized and maybe another one come before. Um, so one in five year goals, I don't really have an update there this meeting, if anybody has anything to add. Um, can we just discuss the the 140 South East Street? Um, oh, form? Sure. I just I was just can, I I'm surprised it's 1770 that house. Um, it might not be. <laughs> I was yeah, just so looking. That's my research. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we had we had determined that maybe that some of it was from the maybe late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, and then you know the neighboring property to the south, you know, based on the block foundation was probably the 30s. I mean, my right. My guess is that area was really wet. You know, it's 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 I, I have a feeling that there probably were structures there, 
you know, as the maps indicated, and I actually don't think the, the structures that are there now are those structures, but it's really hard right. to tell. And so when this came through demolition review, Rob and I had emailed a little bit and we yeah. lost kind of the title chain, but it just based on some of the maps and some of the other things, it was unclear if those are, I mean, it doesn't look like yeah. they are. If you are, look at, right, if you look at the, um, so the foundation inside is fieldstone brick and then granite facing. Um, the, their wide client, I don't know enough about dating a house, but, and, and, and this is actually why I was asking about the demolition, because they said that they would allow us to come and we could probably, you know, if we can get access to the um, timber framing. It would be a really exciting, fun thing for us to do to see if we could date, date the building by its frame. Um, um, so yeah, my skills are not that strong there. I mean, I've, you know, so when I pulled that map, I mean, I can see the, um, I can see the titles going all the way back, but it's true. When you look at the Deacon, uh, the 1772 Deacon Edwards map, it does look like that house is much further back from the road. So that's, you're probably. The, probably the foundation is interesting because it's that mound. So that does, I don't. No, exactly. I mean, it reminded me of the 68 um, McClellan. Um, uh, yes, yeah, exactly. that That's you, I of. was not here for yeah. that, but the Mac, I'm just looking at the macros form for that is it does, it did have that little front porch um, before previously when it was surveyed earlier. Yeah, and it, yeah. that one was dated, is dated to 1861 in the, um, in Macris. Yep. So I just, yeah, it's hard. So it might be I'm that. Not sure either. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I think I have a. Um, I need to do a trip to the registry to, to go one deed back because it gets a little bit more complicated when you go back that far. Um, but yeah, we could get together and um, work on refining that. I think that Nathaniel Edwards. I mean, it's clearly his son Simeon who inherits the land. Like. The land is definitely owned by him. The house might come later. So it's still part of the um being part of the historic record, but you're probably right. I don't we know. Do I, have... I don't know. I'm just yeah. wondering. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good question. Yeah, and I thought <laughs> question, know, and I should have put it as more of a question. <laughs> and a while ago we had I thought CPA money paid for you know certain records to be scanned and available. I don't know if that's through special collections like tax records to see, you know, if there's any improvements listed. I don't know how far back it would go, but um okay. I thought those records were available publicly now without having to physically come into town hall, but. Oh, that's a, that's, how would, how, oh, okay. How would we do that? <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, I know. Yeah. I don't know. Actually. Um, I, for some reason I thought we had certain things scanned and they were going to be then, uh, you know, this is like 10 years ago and then oh, they were okay. linked through special collections, but I don't know how, if that ever happened or, um, all right. So can I email you that and we'll try to follow up because that would be a great piece to add to like our checklist of resources to check. Right, right. Yeah, actually, I'm going to jump on that too in a minute. Okay. But um, yeah, I would love to, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased that the demolition has been delayed because um, I want to make sure to get the date on the calendar so that we can, they, they said they were happy to have us come over there and they would, um, we're going to try to get some of those wide uh, plank flooring salvaged and um, see what we find. <laughs> Any other comments, Madeline? No. Okay, good. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, I think we went over, kind of went over our modern structures list. I'm assuming that's, uh, that's what we were talking about uh, when we were talking about CPA. So we've covered that item. Uh, so item number seven uh, is general public comment. Uh, I see we have uh, four attendees in the audience. If anyone wishes to make a brief comment of uh, a couple minutes, uh, they can raise their hand uh, when they're introduced to the meeting. When you're introduced to the meeting, um, introduce yourself by name and uh, if you're a resident of Amherst. Um, but if I you miss a I'm not seeing any. Sometimes it takes a minute. So uh, one more time, if any members of the public who are attending the meeting would like to make public comment at this time, raise your hand. Um, 
Cinta or Nate, do you know how to uh, do the raised hand function if someone is on just a phone call or? Yes. Yeah, um, any... Sorry, Nate, go ahead. Oh, no, I don't see any, I don't see any hands raised and it just looks like everyone's here. Okay, all right. Computer or device, not so, a... All right, seeing no raised hands, uh, we will move on to unanticipated items. Any unanticipated items for this particular meeting? Okay, seeing none, uh, we should schedule our next meeting for September, although I'm technically our next meeting is for the Jones Library. I will not be attending that. Um, so we're looking for a September meeting and we've been meeting Mondays. Labor Day is the holiday, so uh, September 9th or 16th. And I may be away this 16th, is the 9th available for everyone? It's fine for me. Okay, Pat, Michaela. Yes, Tony. that was. Uh, September um, 9th. I'm checking real quick. Oh, okay, sure. Um, yes, yes. Okay. Madeline, that worked for you? I, I maybe, I think so. I can't say at this point, but sure. let's book it. Okay. <laughs> and Antonia, does that work for you? Wow. Okay. So is that is that really up for him yet? Michaela, did you say you were available? I'm sorry. Yes. I was, okay, great. <laughs> okay. So uh September 9th, Monday, September 9th at 6 30 p.m. All right. That's it. Thanks, everybody. All right, thank you. See you in a month. <laughs> okay.